Next up, the Ojanperä from Technical Research, Research Center of Finland will have held us a lecture. Thank you. Uh, and some of the early cameras okay. that did have on sensor so phase detector autofocus, such as the original I A7, as a and then the subsequent. Leader at VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. Uh, VTT is a Finnish research and technology organization. Uh, to those of you who are not maybe familiar with it, and uh, A7 previously two, I was uh, coordinating of subjects that are changing the their distance Finnish to the National Business Finland uh, I'm just going to just a 10 second uh, 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 what kind of new road safety services 5G will enable and today's presentation I will give you an overview of of the project results and also some ideas of future work uh, the a previous 5G set project, it ended already at the end of 2018, but we have now just started a follow-up project, 5G Safe Plus. So this, this work that I'm presenting today will be continued in this new project. First, some background uh, for our work. So as we all know, uh, effectively operating and safe road network is really a critical requirement for any modern society. And also the EU has a vision to clo reach close to zero casualties in traffic by the year 2050. And the current technological transformation that is taking place in the automotive industry towards more and more connected and increasingly autonomous vehicles can help in improving road safety and road maintenance and this way help us achieving this ambitious goal. Uh, so far, however, the lack of sufficient communication media and scalable data processing solutions have hindered the wide scale adoption of this kind of a more advanced vehicular services. And 5G, together with other technologies such as the multi axis edge computing, are expected to bring a solution to this. Uh, in the 5G Safe project, uh, we studied 5G inspired automotive use cases and that would specifically benefit the society by improving road safety. And we defined three different use cases and based on them, we identified a communication framework and developed service prototypes that were then finally evaluated and trialed in, in real uh, 5G test network and automotive environments. Here is a picture of the overall solution. Uh, its key elements being uh, assuming that uh, all the vehicles traveling on the roads are connected intelligently based on the available networks uh, and using uh, advanced data transmission solutions. And then in the networks and also in the vehicles, uh, we are assuming to have a distributed data processing architecture so that we can process uh, the vehicular sensor data in the vehicles themselves, in the roadside units, in the network edge, in MEC, and even in the cloud. And on top of this uh, connectivity and data processing uh, infrastructure, then we would develop these novel road safety services that in fact rely on uh, this actual sensor data and information collected from the vehicles that are traveling on the roads and also other sources. So there could be, for instance, weather stations installed alongside of the roads and providing information for these new road safety services. Uh, the use cases that, that the 5G Safe project studied uh, were uh, first, first of all, uh, local and focused road weather and safety services. And here the idea was to look at uh, this very localized road weather and information and alerts that were produ produced based on the data collected from the vehicles, from vehicular cameras, sensors, and then delivered to road users and road maintenance in real time. Uh, 
And the benefits envisioned for this kind of services were improvements to road safety, but also optimizations to road maintenance, such as snow plowing, sanding and repairs. Then in the second use case, we were looking into a little bit services that would then make use of the improved bandwidth and uh, better uh, reliability and low delay performance of 5G. And we were looking at, for instance, this kind of a see-through application where vehicles traveling in a queue uh, would receive uh, a live video stream of the front view of the first truck or bus and this way to, to get um, uh, more information on the road conditions or obstacles ahead and this way to be able to uh, adjust their driving and decisions better. And then the third use case was focusing on automated driving and this kind of a more low delay and high reliability services required by automated driving. And this would include, uh, for instance, safety critical control information, such as emergency braking, challenging weather, obstacles on the road, etc. And this information uh, would then benefit uh, the automated vehicles in terms of enhancing their situational awareness and intelligence uh, beyond their own sensors and also the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication range. There is a, also YouTube video avail available in case some of you are interested in taking a look of this third use case. Uh, the system architecture uh, defined in the project uh, based on the use cases and the requirements extracted from the use cases uh, is uh, the overall architecture is depicted in this picture. Uh, we decided to go for this kind of a layered design uh, with uh, vehicle roadside edge and core layers and including the physical components that are then uh, hosting specific functionalities and having communication links in between. Uh, the main reasons for selecting this, this approach for the architecture definition was that it's, of course, quite easily extendable to include more components depending on service requirements. And um, also, also, in this figure, uh, you can see First, first of all, the physical components, but then in, in some of the project deliverables, if, if you're interested, there are also more detailed specifications on the communications links. For instance, how the information is flowing from the vehicle side, from the onboard unit towards perhaps the roadside, roadside unit or weather station providing information back to the vehicle. Then in the edge, uh, the MEC server hosting, hosting some of the local weather services, for instance. And then in the core backend, uh, having the services, services and service backend functionalities implemented there with, uh, for instance, the weather service backend road maintenance and any third party services. And of course, information could be, could be shared between these um, core service or core applications as well. Uh, here is an overview of the communications view of the architecture that we were considering in the project. <coughs> uh, so uh, basically, basically the idea is that or was that we are considering not only 5G, but hybrid connectivity. So, of course, now, especially in the first phase of the 5G deployment, the same 5G features are not really available everywhere where the vehicles are traveling. So, uh, in some locations, the vehicles will still need to rely on 4G and other technologies. And also, we were still considering the... Um, uh, 802.11p based ITS G5 tech, short, short range technology. Uh, for instance, the, the weather stations could be connected using this to the vehicles. But anyway, the idea is would be then to select the best best available technology for the for the services dynamically. 
Then, uh, as mentioned earlier, so the data processing uh, is distributed between the vehicles, edge and cloud. And uh, the 5G features uh, utilized in the project uh, would will then enable uh, this kind of a real-time transmission, also this kind of a more resource-consuming vehicle data. So in the project, we were considering also streaming of video and LiDAR data between the vehicles and also towards the towards the Mac and cloud, uh, which which isn't really possible, for instance, with ITHG five, which has very very limited. Uh, or tight specification of the messages supported there. And also the scalability of the architecture, it was considered so, so the local services uh, could then be implemented using the MEC or the, or the roadside, roadside units. So the heavier vehicle data would be collected to these uh, local, local servers and only warnings would then be sent out back to the other vehicles and also the cloud core. And then the cloud core of the backend services would then be providing more generic intelligence uh, built on top of the localized services and also collecting vast amount of information from, from different sources, both the vehicles and, and roadside, but in, in a processed format. Uh, one of the challenges with this kind of a services uh, would be that they, of course, require a very efficient communication framework in order to communicate, collect and communicate the vehicular data and warnings uh, from, from the vehicles to the edge and cloud, etc., and back. And uh, we considered uh, this kind of a information, layered information broker approach uh, for vehicular data collection and distribution in the project. So uh, the idea here is that each of the entities, that is the vehicles, roadside units, edge and core, uh, they have a local information broker managing the, the data there. And we can, thanks to the layered design, uh, we can then tailor the implementation, the use protocols uh, to the needs of each of these entities. And uh, for, for the data collection and transfer, uh, we were considering this kind of a publish subscribe architecture and the implementation could then be done with different protocols. Uh, in the project, we considered DDS, MQTT and COPE, for instance. And uh, this, of course, this layered design also allows uh, novel architectures to be included, for instance, make in our case. Uh, in addition to this uh, specification and design work, uh, and also implementing implementing the service prototypes and, and building the network functionalities, we also val uh, wanted to develop and validate the solutions in real environments. And we utilized the 5G test networks that were available at that time in Finland. So we, we were mainly relying on the 5G TN plus network in Oulu and the SOD 5G test network in Sodankula. Uh, the SOD 5G uh, test track uh, is depicted on the figure on the upper figure. So there, there we actually in Sodankula area next to the airport, we had access to this Fintro vehicle test track and uh, where this SOT 5G network was available. So it allowed us to, to, to be testing with actual vehicles also. And these two networks are linked together. So 5G TN plus is actually acting as the core network for SOT 5G. And it, it also included a Mac server that we could, could utilize for testing and demos. Then for the vehicles and vehicular platforms that we were utilizing, uh, we had VTT's self-driving vehicle called, called Marti. It's shown in the lower figure. Uh, Volkswagen Touareg that has been uh, modified to drive 
by itself and uh, it has been installed with a variety of different kinds of sensors and cameras and radars. Uh, then we had our partner's Unikis vehicle that was equipped with a LiDAR sensor. And uh, Finnish Meteor Meteorological Institute had also their test vehicle uh, that was equipped with uh, friction measurement uh, instrumentation uh, by Tekoner. And also the project uh, had access to an Arctic, Arctic uh, truck fleet that was traveling between Kevitsa mine and Kemi in Finnish Lapland. And we installed various sensors on board of the trucks so that we could collect also lots of data alongside from the roads. And of course, uh, this kind of a testing with real, real environments and real vehicles, it's of course always a little bit small scale, so only one or two vehicles communicating. So in order to do uh, scalability analysis and testing with with larger amount of vehicles and in larger, larger network settings, we also utilized network simulators. Uh, for instance, VTT was uh, developing NS3 simulation models to, to support the practical testing in the project. Uh, here is an overlook of the 5G test network that VTT is having uh, hosting and which was also utilized in this project. Mainly we were utilizing the test network in the city of Oulu, uh, but and also Sodankula area. And since we were doing the final final demos and pilots uh, in November 2018, of course at that time we were still heavily relying on 4G technologies. In the project we did some uh, first, first testing with uh, pre-5G radios, but, but they weren't yet integrated into this uh, test network environments. But definitely this is an environment now that it's, is being extended and to, uh, for this follow-up project, it's something that we will be continuing to utilize. And also some features besides the new 5G capabilities coming in. Um, we are also planning to planning to utilize the satellite network integration features to to get this kind of a backup connectivity connectivity uh, in addition to these terrestrial networks. So uh, we, uh, to present a little bit about the actual pilots and demos that we did did in this project. So on the map, you can see the location of Sodankula, which was the location of the vehicle test track where the testing took and the final demos took place. Uh, first pilot, it was focusing on advanced road weather services. And the goal here was to enable more sophisticated weather services for, for roads and traffic thanks to the more robust and extensive data exchange uh, between vehicles and cloud enabled by 5G. And here is actually a picture from wintertime testing in the in this Orangula test track. So the, the vehicle in the picture is, is traveling on the test track and the picture is trying to illustrate the services that we developed for this, for this case. So there was a weather forecast issued to the test track. There are the road weather stations also quite small in the picture shown. So the vehicle would then uh, get, uh, receive information uh, about the prevailing weather. And then we also emulated an airbag burst warning of another vehicle that was received via the 5G test network. And thirdly, we were also using this uh, friction measurement instrumentation to collect friction data to, to uh, server and then generate a slippery route warning on the test track so that uh, the vehicles traveling on the test track could then avoid this slippery stretch of a road. 
the second pilot uh, was then focusing on this vehicle to vehicle video to, to improve road safety. In this case, I have to say that uh, in, during this project, uh, we didn't yet have support, for instance, for side link communication or this direct device to device communication between the vehicles. But anyway, we wanted to, to showcase this, this service uh, to, to show the benefits. And especially here in the, in the figure, you can see the idea, uh, especially in the Finnish, Finnish winter condition, conditions, when even when it, if it's not snowing as such, there can be this kind of a very loose snow on the surface of the road that is hindering visibility of vehicles traveling, tra traveling behind another vehicles. So this kind of a video view, uh, real-time view of the front vehicle can really help the vehicles coming behind to know what, what is the situation ahead. And um, our assumption was that uh, thanks to the high bandwidth and high reliability of 5G, this kind of a services could then be implemented also. Uh, in the pilot, uh, we, we demonstrated this service concept. So on the test track, so we had one vehicle driving on the test track and sending out video from its dashboard camera. And then we had another vehicle traveling behind uh, where the driver could then watch, watch the camera view of the front vehicle uh, while driving. And also, also for the data collection, so we were also able to receive live video stream from the Arctic truck fleet for, for the for service, service development when it was on the move. Uh, the third pilot uh, was then uh, demonstrating services for optimizing road maintenance. And here we could really see uh, the benefit of 5G uh, since uh, actually today, a road maintenance personnel, they really have to drive through the road network to do road inspection tasks or quality control. So this is very labor intensive work and could really benefit for this kind of a crowdsourced data so that vehicles that are anyway traveling traveling on the roads would provide real-time information for road maintenance purposes and this way to reduce the costs of the road maintenance uh, inspection and quality control. Uh, in this project we, we were piloting different kinds of services in this context. So in the upper figure uh, is this kind of a map-based tool that was developed on top of this uh, data collection and analysis model that was used for detecting road maintenance needs. And in the map, the idea was to show with colors places where which would need more detailed inspe inspection and also also maybe direct the repair or other other road maintenance operations to these locations. And uh, the tool was also storing storing video video clips of these locations so that the road maintenance personnel could then inspect also the video video data to see what, what is actually happening in that location or if is there some potholes or some some uh, hard ridges of snow, etc., that should be removed. Then uh, another service concept for the road maintenance purposes was this automated detection of snowy traffic signs from based on vehicle camera data so that the road maintenance could then be uh, sending out the cleaning to these locations where the uh, traffic signs are no longer visible. And then uh, uh, there was this uh, snowplow scheduling solution developed by, in collaboration by Destia and the Finnish Meteorological Institute that was then relying on both these mobile observations of, of the road, road snow conditions, uh, the data from the road weather stations and all the, also the weather forecast. And this way, uh, using this tool, Destia is able to to know 
when the trucks have been out recently, when the roads have been cleaned the last time, and what is the snowfall and the forecast and when, when they should be sending out the snow plows again. So quite a lot of this kind of a optimization of the of the road maintenance operations are allowed with these tools. And then the Ford pilot, this was developed by VTC and Uniki and also participated by FMI. Uh, we were looking at uh, these 5G assisted uh, automated driving features. And of course, in this case, we wanted to show how 5G can uh, help improve the situational awareness and safety of automated vehicles. And we were focusing on, on road weather and road condition information in this case. In this case. And uh, what, what we were specifically utilizing uh, was the uplink capacity for the vehicular data communication. So we were sending out LiDAR data to make, for instance. And it's to be then seen how, how this, this kind of features will be supported supported by 5G later on. The services uh, or the scenario that we, we were showcasing in the final final demo event. So we had VTT's robot car driving in automated mode on the Sodankla test track and it received a slippery road warning uh, from, from the weather service and was then able to replan its, its route accordingly. And also the robot car was receiving an upfront warning of an obstacle from a mech server and was then able to take action to avoid it. And we were using, for instance, in the lower figure, you can see a snapshot of this map tool that was then showing the locations of the warnings and, and then the route planned by the automated vehicle. Uh, to give a bit more details about this last last case, so how this proof of concept uh, system was then implemented. So as, as briefly mentioned, so the, the case that we were considering was this LIDAR-based obstacle warning scenario that of which purpose was to improve the safety of automated driving. Uh, in the set up we had two vehicles traveling on the road uh, there was a light up publisher vehicle traveling in the front and then the automated vehicle in the back and both of these vehicles were connected to a mech server via the 5g test network then uh, the mech it hosted an obstacle detection algorithm that was generating warnings based on the lidar data received from the first vehicle and then the automated vehicle then received the warning when there was an obstacle on the road and was then able to act accordingly for instance to to break or go around the obstacle depending on the case uh, for the implementation uh, for the mech server it was a linux server hosted in the 5g tn plus network and it also included both Apache Kafka and MQTT brokers, since these were the these were the communication protocols that we were utilizing for the data transmission and also distribution of the warnings. Uh, for the lidar data uh, transmission, so this was done using Apache Kafka. Uh, and the data was was sent in point cloud data format to the MEC server. Then the obstacle detection algorithm running in the MEC server. Uh, we used Uniki's application for this, and it was installed as a Docker container on the MEC server. And it was then receiving the lidar data from the from the first vehicle. And when an obstacle was detected by the, by the algorithm, it generated a warning message, uh, which was then sent out using the MQTT interface. 
and the automated vehicle then was uh, uh, hosted an MQTT subscriber uh, in order to receive these warnings and other information sent through the test setup. Here is maybe a little bit more detailed uh, figure of the overall uh, framework, communication framework implementation. For the broker software, we were using uh, Mosquito MQTT broker and then Confluence Apache Kafka. Uh, the actual warning message, it car carried information uh, about the current time and the location of the obstacle and then the type and level of the warning. The type was indicating the type of the obstacle. So in this project, we were um, considering both uh, this kind of a iced snow or a very hard ridge of snow on, on, the, on the surface of the road that could potentially hinder the driving on that road or then an actual physical obstacle uh, that could be bigger. And then the level level information would then in, indicate how, how large the obstacle is. So the higher the value, the larger the obstacle in this case. Uh, for the LiDAR data generation and processing, uh, we use the Velodyne LiDAR LiDAR device sensor, it is providing 360 horizontal field of view, but we were only utilizing the front, front side of the car, so 180 degrees. Uh, in the algorithm side, uh, it implemented a multi-layered processing pipeline, including pre-filtering of the LiDAR data to remove points of back of the sensor and also ground points. Then uh, object detection uh, features, cluster tracking and also cluster classifications were supported by the algorithm. And then in the automated vehicle, vehicle side, so we were using VTT's Marti vehicle that was then set to drive autonomously on the test track. Uh, for this, the vehicle is using both its own sensors and also the warnings and information it is receiving from the MEC server. The vehicle, it was programmed with the local map of the test site that was then used in the route planning. And the internal communication within the vehicle uh, is implemented using OpenDDS messaging platform. Uh, the main driving decisions uh, are based on the uh, vehicle's internal processing system, such as the route planner, and the warnings that the vehicle is receiving from the MEC server, they were used, used basically to increase caution, caution in the warning area. So, of course, the car, car will anyway also utilize its own sensors to verify if, if, for instance, this obstacle is still there when it's receiving or, or reaching the uh, warning location. I have a short video. Let's see how this works about the final demo. So how, how this looked in practice. So here we have the Unikis vehicle in front. It was sending out the LiDAR data over the 5G test network, and then we have the Marti vehicle driving in autonomous mode behind. So when the yellow light is flashing, the car is driving by itself. And um, then there was this obstacle on the road, and this just so shows the scenario and also a little bit of the November conditions on the test track. Okay, uh, also we did some, some measurements and tests to, to get an idea about the whole delay 
in in or the end to end delay in this whole whole chain of from the lidar publisher vehicle all the way to the automated vehicle with all the all the algorithm processing in between and communication and uh, so so the overall delay uh, it is uh, comprising of the PCD file transmission delay. So the algorithm only processes the LIDAR data when it has received the whole PCD file at the time. Then there is the algorithm processing delay and then the network delay between the MAC server and the automated vehicle for the warning, warning message transmission. Um, so far in the test networks, which were LTE based and maybe also a little bit limited, especially in terms of the uplink, uplink bandwidth. So we were reaching uh, maybe 800 millisecond uh, end to end delays, uh, usually uh, in this kind of ITS services utilizing cloud computing to target would be to reach 500 milliseconds. Also, we had quite a lot of variation in the delay, so, so there is definitely a lot of places for improvement. Overall, the uplink transmission delay was high to, to communicate the whole PCD file at the time to the algorithm, and then the algorithm processing delay were the more significant metrics in this overall setup in this case. 5G, of course, offering smaller delays in the communication link on, or in the radio path, uh, and also higher throughput uh, or bandwidth in the network side uh, is assumed, of course, to help in this whole overall end-to-end -end delay and also hopefully to bring additional reliability on, on knowing how, how much the delay is. So I think this is quite critical also for the automated vehicle vehicle features, depending on the driving speed, of course. And uh, we were also concluding that these algorithm processing delays, of course, could be could be uh, improved uh, by by tweaks in the implementation, and also we still need to optimize maybe the whole whole communication chain in this case, because this was only a proof of concept at the moment. There is uh, some further details available in, in our paper published last year in the EU CNC conference, if you're interested. So uh, to give some conclusions, uh, so 5G and edge computing definitely will be key enablers for this kind of a more more advanced and novel connected vehicle applications that, that can then help improve road safety. 5G and uh, edge computing, they will enable scalable and reliable communications and processing of the vehicular sensor and camera data in real time. And this way in allow implementing localized and also more intelligent services for the, for the road users. And these first pilots conducted in the 5G test network with real vehicles, they really attested the feasibility of the of these 5G service concepts. And so much as that uh, we also got a follow-up project uh, for, for this earlier 5G Safe project. So 5G Safe Plus has uh, started around six months ago here in Finland. We are still waiting if we will have a international consortium uh, also in this project so so the target is to have a celtic celtic project in this next phase but let's see how it goes anyway we have uh finnish finnish companies and research organizations already working on this new project and uh, some ideas for future work so one one topic would be to invest, investigate how to reduce the data amount of data to, that is transmitted both over the wireless and on the wired network. And the idea would be to pre-process and compress and adapt the data at the connected vehicle side as much as possible. And then only send out process information or warning, warning messages 
to the MEX server to be distributed to, to other vehicles, for instance, and also to communicate it to the backend cloud, for instance. Then we will be investigating the trade-offs of the different scenarios, so how much data processing and what kind of limitations for the data processing we have in the vehicle side, uh, what, what, how much of the processing should be taking place in the MEC, and then what, what we can then be doing in the cloud side to, to optimize the overall, overall solution. And also, tweaks to the to the test setups uh, actually there are currently plannings going on how to improve the test networks and capabilities to gain better performance and of course allow us to start testing with the actual 5g new radio and also this uh, cb2x connectivity in this follow-up project Okay, thank you for your attention. And here are uh, my contact information if if you have some questions or comments and also there are some links to the project websites also and, and to the YouTube to see the video. Thank you, the Aoi and Pera, for your lecture. Now we're going to take an hour break until oh. until the MIT lecture by Muriel Medard at at 4 EEST. Thank you. See you soon.